Yeah, first of all, I'm, I'm really impressed to be here in front of you. Um, the, the venue is amazing. So thank you for, for the program committee who accept my talk first and for the organizer for, for organizing the event. The content is really good till now. And, and yeah, so I'm French, I knew, as you can hear. And uh, I work at Volex City and I work on the threat intelligence team. Previously, I worked for Kaspersky, great, Cisco Talos. And I mainly work on CTI and malware analysis. And this topic will be about uh, this topic, malware analysis. And more specifically about uh, macOS malware. And uh, if you want to contact me after the presentation, if you have questions or if you want some file or stuff like that, you can contact me on Twitter. Uh, my DM are open or on Keybase, and I would be happy to, to share what you need. It's, it's not a problem. So let's speak about the agenda. Uh, I will speak about a macOS malware I worked on on April this year. And I was uh, really excited by working on this uh, case because I don't often work on macOS malware because, you know, it, malware does not exist on macOS. So I was really excited about that. And um, the presentation will be about uh, the workflow. So uh, the first stage, the downloader, second stage, the malware itself is a different capability. And uh, the last part uh, will be uh, more about the attribution and why we linked it to uh, Inquiskid uh, and why we think, in fact, it's a macOS version of Rockrat. And before starting, uh, I need to, to mention this thing. So I work on it on April. We published a, a private report at the beginning of May. Uh, middle of May, I replied to the call for paper. And uh, beginning of July, uh, I received the mail, I'm accepted. And in the middle of July, <laughs> Mark Etienne uh, published a blog post about the malware I was working on. So I was a little bit sad. I discussed with Juan to know if I need to cancel my talk, if I need to find something else. I discussed with my colleagues. And a very really nice friend told me something very really funny for me. He told me, you know, being scooped by ESET is probably the proof your research is solid. So I decided to do it. And I decided to speak a little bit more about the attribution and why we think it's uh, the macOS version of uh, Rockrack, because it's not mentioned on uh, the ESET publication. So ESET named uh, the malware cloud Mesis. Mesis. We name it uh, Badrat. On the presentation, I will use our name, because that's the name we use on our report uh, be before uh, the publication, but it, it's the same uh, malware. So, yeah. First, uh, let's discuss a little bit about Inky Squid. So it's uh, also named at APT37 uh, by uh, Mandion, Scarcraft by Kaspersky, Group 123 by uh, Cisco Talos. And it's a North Korean uh, threat actor. And uh, he mainly, from my knowledge, he mainly targets uh, defectors or people linked to this domain, like lawyers and, and stuff like that. Uh, a big issue for, for us, and when you want to, to follow this specific threat actor, is most of the time they target uh, personal computer. So they don't target company, uh, they target directly uh, the, the users. They, they are known to use uh, spear phishing and water rolling, and they often use a couple of ND exploits. So I think they use once zero day for a few years ago, but m most of the time it's not zero day, it's end day. And we will see uh, they do exactly the same thing on, on this case. And uh, we already published two uh, stuff about this uh, specific uh, threat actor. Yeah, just for information, as he said, already published something, we won't do it. We won't publish anything after the publication. So if you, you want something, feel free to ping me. I will give you what you need. Uh, but I don't think we will publish something. It, it won't be super interesting after uh, ESET publication. So why we name it Badrat? And it's simply on the compilation path on the, the sample. You have bad uh, in the name. You also have a, a name, which is Leon Work. And uh, 
you have a, a version system. So here it's uh, version 29. We think it's 2.9, in fact. Uh, but it means it's here for, for a couple of time. We only discovered it uh, on April this year, but it's, uh, it's here for, for a long time. So it's macOS malware, and it supports uh, x86 uh, architecture and IRM architecture also. You have uh, both uh, binary compile. And uh, yeah, the first stage is uh, a downloader. So as you can imagine, it downloads something. And the downloader uses pcloud. So you have an API key in the binary. It downloads uh, the next stage on pcloud. And in fact, it downloads two stuff. Uh, uh, no, it downloads one stuff, the final malware, badrat. And it also drops a persistence file. So here is the persistence file. So it's simply uh, a classical macOS daemon. It's no, nothing really complicated. But yeah, all right. And uh, the purpose is to execute something named uh, Windows Server, which is funny for macOS malware. Something interesting in the downloader, so it doesn't do anything except downloading something, dropping the two files. But the developer forget old code. So it's not executed, but it's still here. And it's an uh, old exploit from 2017. So I think they remove it because it doesn't work anymore. It's too old. But they remove the code, but they don't remove the, the, the code itself. And it's a privileged escalation. So it's uh, uh, something public. And it, it was probably used after the publication on GitHub because you really have a copy paste of uh, the, the GitHub project. So it's probably uh, an ND used by this uh, threat actor. So if we look at uh, uh, the malware itself, you really have all the capability of something for espionage. So the malware is able to execute arbitrary command, to provide a remote shell to the attackers, to perform screenshot, to perform keylogging. I put a screenshot of the, of the keylogging. To uh, make some exfiltration based on file extension. So he has a dictionary of file extension, and it will exfiltrate all the file with this uh, extension. Something interesting is if you plug a USB device, it will use this uh, extension list to exfiltrate all the document from this USB device. And there is also an email parsing uh, mechanism. So uh, it passes this uh, user username library mail uh, repository and exfiltrate all the attachment received by the user, uh, always based on these uh, extensions. And the attacker is able to execute Apple script uh, directly uh, on, on the malware. So something interesting is there is absolutely no obfuscation. So everything is in text plane. You can almost read it. The only obfuscation is the configuration file, which is kind of more important because you have the API key, et cetera. And here I implemented the algorithm as they implemented it. Finally, it's a simple XOR, but they, they make a, a lot of weird stuff to do XOR. So it's basically their implementation. And on the configuration file, you have the version 29 in, 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 in our sample, which means a couple of different versions can live together because each version will have its own configuration file. So, yeah. The configuration file contains a lot of detail on the infected machine. So uh, the malware will connect the IP, country, username, hardware, host name, so uh, a, a full image of uh, the infected uh, system. This information will be sent to the attackers at the first connection. And the AP key for the cloud provider. And the malware supports free cloud provider. So Dropbox, pCloud, and Yandex in our sample. Something interesting is uh, the cloud provider is identified by an integer. And it starts at 2. So we assume the path they had 1, because nobody starts counting at 2. So they probably supported another provider in the past but it was removed in, in this sample. And from a code point of view, the free 
uh, cloud provider, the code is here. It's, sim it's simply the configuration file will say I will use this code or this code, but you have the implementation embedded in the file for the free uh, provider. It will also contain uh, a path where the malware put is temporary stuff. The extension, we will see the extension a little bit after, so that's the extension I mentioned previously. And a uh, generated ID to identify the victim. We will see it's, uh, it's used on the C2 server. And uh, a zip password. So everything is exfiltrated by using zip and a password. And the password is der derived from the uh, randomly generated ID. So that's the protocol. It's, it's really simple. So everything is based on a repository and file on the cloud provider. So the algorithm is exactly the same for all the uh, provider, all the cloud provider. And yeah, so basically all the information are sent to January and uh, after everything is done on February. So the malware uh, reads the repository, check for file for him. So you have the bot ID, so he, he knows where he needs to go. And if there is a file with a command, he would execute the command. If he needs to exfiltrate something, it will fix exfiltrate on the good repository. Uh, for the shell, uh, the interaction is also done by file. So the attackers put the command on the file, the malware reads the command, execute, and push the output on the file. So everything is file and repository. So there is a, a a feature which is interesting is on macOS you have the transparency, consent, and control. So basically when an application wants to be able to do, for example, screenshot, you have a pop-up saying this application wants to do screenshot, do you allow uh, this, this capability, this feature? And the attackers uh, found some trick to bypass it. So everything is stored in database, which is named tcc.db and it's a SQL uh, light database. And um, so one approach is to directly perform a SQL request to the file and said, I authorize my malware to do screenshot, to do keylogging, etc., etc." But this file is protected by uh, SIP, which is uh, System Integrity Protection. So normally you cannot edit this file, you cannot perform uh, uh, SQLite query on, on this file directly. So the malware has two branches. Which one is, uh, the first one is, okay, SIP is disabled, so I can edit the file, I, I'm, I don't have any issue. So in this case, it directly perform SQLite query. And if it's enabled, the malware will exploit uh, a vulnerability to edit the file. And if nothing works, uh, it doesn't do anything and the user will receive the pop-up and, uh, and yeah, they need to enable uh, some feature uh, manually. But in this case, the CV, CV is a little bit uh, more recent than the one that was in the do downloader. This one is 2020. So yeah, now if we look at uh, similarities between the Rockrack, it's, it's also named uh, Doc Call by Mandiant, I think which is a, a Windows malware, and it, it's one, I think it's the main malware used by this group on, on Windows system. And if you look, I put a small table about the two uh, malware for, for Windows and macOS, and the two malware use the same cloud provider, so it's the same free cloud provider, and the way the developer implemented it is exactly the same. You have the code of the free cloud provider, and you have a flag somewhere. In macOS, it's a configuration file. On Windows, it's a little bit different, but it's a flag saying, I will use this cloud provider with this API key. So it's exactly the same thing. If we look uh, at the uh, extension targeted by the attacker, so it's first thing, they have a list of extensions, both malware. It's not exactly the same, if you, if you look. The main difference, between the Windows version from last year and the macOS version of this year is first, the new version support the extended uh, document like DocX, XMLX, uh, etc. But you can see uh, the 
HWP extension, which is Hangul Word Processor. It's uh, the word used in South Korea. So it's, it's kind of specific. And you also have really uh, uncommon file. Typically, I think about uh, which one in the list here, IMR. So dot IMR, it's uh, a compressed audio file used by uh, you know, speech coding when you speak and it directly writes your text. So it, it's really specific. And, uh, and yeah, so it's not exactly the same extension, but it's, it's really close. Uh, the design of the malware is really, really similar. It, it, obviously, it's macOS and Windows, so if you compare the code, it's different. But the logic is uh, really similar. And, uh, and the way the protocol used on the cloud provider, it's not exactly the same. On Windows, it doesn't use months, uh, etc. but it's, all, it's, it's based on file and repository. So we have something very, very uh, uh, similar. So that's why we estimate that uh, Badrat is uh, the Rockrat version for, for macOS. So for, for conclusion, we have a, a threat actor, uh, which is more than probably uh, based in North Korea. He's active for more than 10 years, and he's still active. Before, he was mainly known for using Rockrat implant on, on Windows. Today, we know that uh, they also have a macOS version of, of the malware. They are known to use social engineering and exploit ND vulnerabilities. So in this case, we don't have the infection vector, so we don't know how the malware is deployed. But if we would have to bet or to guess, uh, we would not be surprised if they use water rolling and ND uh, exploit to, to deploy the, the malware, at least the downloader and after everything uh, is installed. But we, we don't know. So yeah, thank you for, for your time. If you have questions, feel free to, to write me. If you need the sample or, or whatever, feel free to, to, to ping me. And if you have questions, we have two minutes. Silas has a question. Can you repeat no. the question? Yeah. So, yeah, the short version of the question, <laughs> did we see an Android version? <laughs> so, no, we, we didn't. But uh, for us, at least, it's kind of complicated because Android generally, they speak on WhatsApp directly with the target and uh, like a date or something like that. And they install the application. So it, if it's not on VT for us, it's kind of dif difficult to, to, to have the answer. Maybe you should ask to people at Google. <laughs> they will probably have the answer. So they were also using Google and Microsoft for the CPU version. Yeah. All right, I heard that uh, Fireball is good for jet lag, so cheers. Mm -hmm.